What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So, we're going to check out 10 best championship matches from the Royal Rumble pay per views, man. Royal Rumble is literally right around the corner. So, you know, it's always good that the pay per view hopefully, you know, has a good uh, men's and Royal Rumble uh, actual match and having some matches, you know, throughout the show that are actually quite entertaining. So, I'm looking forward to. Uh, Roman Reigns and Kevin Owens match I think it's going to be fantastic I enjoy their uh, their last man standing match uh, from a few years ago outside of the botched ending that match was fun and chaotic and I wonder if it's going to be on this list because that was a pretty good match man they had a pretty good feud um, so it's always good to have good matches sprinkled throughout the actual Royal Rumble pay-per-view. So we're going to check out some of the best championship matches from WWE when it comes to this pay-per-view. Appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel. And uh, yeah, let's get right into this one. Royal Rumble is WWE's best pay-per-view event. It's the most fun, it's the one everyone looks forward to the most, it has the most intrigue involved, and it makes Sullivan feel all warm and cuddly inside. But oh, while wow. the Royal Rumble <laughs> matches are what most people tune into the show to see, the Rumble event has yielded an incredible amount of stellar matches of the non-Royal Rumble variety as well. I know the title of this video says greatest championship matches, but for the sake of keeping this video a lot more uniform, I'ma just take the time right now to give the Royal Rumble 1992 and Royal Rumble 2016 the flowers they deserve. Both as great matches for the WWE Championship, but this is a list for the non-Rumble matches out there. Mm -hmm. If we needed a couple more to fluff up the list and get it to 10, maybe we would have included them, but there is no shortage of great matches from the Rumble to give flowers to. So here, daisies and roses and tulips to you all. <laughs> tulips, whoop, whoop, tulips, whoop, whoop. I'm Tempest hailing from Parts Fun Known, and these are the 10 greatest championship matches from the Royal Rumble. But before we get on with our list, make sure, of subscribe course, if you like this video, to, subscribe uh, and enable notifications to always on if you so haven't you never already. miss a fun list just like it. And it really helps out the channel. So just ring that bell. Ring it. Ding, ding. Ding, 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 ding. Number 10, the Dudleys versus Edge and Christian, 2001. Oh, we're going back. Here is the match that Adam Blompier refused to have not be on this list. The 2001 Royal Rumble is one of the best WWE pay-per-views of all time. Mm. And it does indeed have one of the best opening matches of any WWE pay-per-view. The WWE Tag Division was still firing on all cylinders mm -hmm. in 2001, with the epic game of musical belts being played between the Hardys, the Dudleys, and Edge and Christian, yep. with the latter of those two teams going toe-to-toe -to -toe at the 01 Rumble. The action is crisp, the crowd is in fuego, you get a title change which always fires the people up, and the whole match is just filled to the brim with peak Attitude Era energy that just makes me feel so... <laughs> there may be better wrestled matches out there, but here at PFKHQ, we the rank matches based on vibes. <laughs> and the vibes in this match are immaculate. Well, as long as you ignore the poorly aged concussion selling from Bubba Ray Dudley, but hey, it was yeah. a different, much stupider time. Mm -hmm. Number nine, Chris Jericho <laughs> versus The Rock, 2002. Chris Jericho's reign as undisputed WWF champion is not remembered for many good things. He beat The Rock and Steve Austin in the same mm -hmm. night to win the title, and then... Well, Jericho never really brings up what happened next. His yeah. <laughs> reign was pretty stinky, with the focus in his feuds going everywhere but on him. But throughout all of this, there is one glimmer of quality. Which is crazy. You would think someone beating The Rock and the Stone Cold in the same night, that's a legendary thing. You would think that would kind of catapult him. But they didn't really go anywhere. That <laughs> It's funny. The Stone Cold and The Rock were so over. They one of the few individuals. They were just so over that people cared more about whatever storyline they were involved in. A lot of times, if they weren't the champion, they cared about their storylines more than the actual champion themselves. That's when you know you're mega over when the fans they don't need the championship to be on you to still want to see more of you. It's 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 kind of a crazy thing. Wrestling in the form of his Royal Rumble 2002 title defense against The Rock. Jericho and The Rock have always had very good chemistry together, whether it be as promo partners, mm -hmm. tag partners, or opponents. And even with copious amounts of interference and shenanigans from notable worst referee of all time, Nick yeah, Patrick, of as well as a belt shot, nut shot, and the most blatant feet on the rope spot ever, yeah. this is a really good match. This again has the kind of attitude era wackiness that gets the early <laughs> 2000s crowd all hot and bothered. And if the entirety of Jericho's reign would have carried the same energy, maybe people would have looked back on it a little more fondly. Number possibly, eight, possibly. John Cena versus Umaga, Ooh, 2007. Some may or may I not. I forgot about this. Damn, rest in peace, Umaga, bro. I ain't gonna lie to you. Umaga 
was a very good opponent for John. Like, he came off very, very menacing. Like, how we look at Solo uh, Sokoa now as this menacing threat or whatnot, it's the same thing with Umaga. Like, he seemed very dangerous. And I at one point, there's a few times within this feed, I'm like, yeah, I don't know if John's going to come out on top on this one, bro. <laughs> no, but 2007 was the year that John Cena was the f man. His track record on pay-per-view that year was incredible, serving as the highlights of his year-long reign as WWE champion. The beginning of that year, however, saw him go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Umaga, ooh, 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 a man who never became world champion in WWE, yeah. but absolutely should have. The Samoan Bulldozer fell to Cena at New Year's Revolution, but stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with Cena again in a last man standing match at the Royal Rumble, a match that surpassed their previous match that in every was way good. imaginable. That match Cena was, was good, not a finesse bro. performer by any means, especially at this point in his career, but he damn sure could fight, and a rough and tough weapons-filled brawl with a monster yeah, this that he had to choke so... unconscious with the ring. Bro, ring. That's, that's such a crazy visual. I remember watching this. He took the top rope, and he had to literally... Choke him out with a submission just to put him out. That's how, that's how like monsters Umaga came off as. This is my kind of fight. That was it's fun. It's a shame that Umaga never quite reached world title contention again after this match, but this was certainly one of the best title matches of Cena's career to that point and a great way to kick nah. off Cena's impeccable 2006. That shit was Number fucking seven, fun. Kevin Owens versus Roman Reigns. Debate about whether to include Kevin Owens versus Roman Reigns this in the 2021 so fun, Royal Rumble on this match. list. Their last man standing match is also very fun and includes the third best use of a golf cart in wrestling history behind Sammy Guevara's brain being scrambled and Raven almost killing WrestleMania X7, but that match doesn't have a crowd, and this one does. The referee also stops his count to help Roman yeah. escape defeat in that match, which is just absurd. Yeah. Nay, at the Royal Rumble in 2017, then Universal Champion Kevin Owens puts his title on the line against Roman Reigns in a no DQ Chris Jericho in a shark cage match. They could have put they could have put that one, and 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 I got the the matches confused because they did have another match at at a Royal Rumble, so I did get the matches confused. They could have put that one on the list. Granted, once again, even though there was no crowd for that Royal Rumble and the botch ending. It's still one of my favorite Royal Rumble matches. That shit was so fucking fun. They could have put that one on the list, but this is another good substitution as well. There are some nutty spots in this yeah. match, like Kevin Owens being pushed through the Iron Throne. This if was instead crazy, of being made of bro. a thousand swords, it was made oh of a thousand chairs. God. A Superman punch with brass knucks, and finally a run-in from Braun Strowman to somewhat ruin the fun. That's bad. Although it kept Roman from beating Owens from the mm -hmm. title. That's good. That's good. But it meant Roman ended up being the number 30 entrant in the Royal Rumble that night. That's, That's bad. bad. <laughs> this match itself? That's, That's good. good. <laughs> number six, Kevin Owens versus Dean Ambrose, 2016. Quite Starting a lot of see talk if I of last man standing this match. matches on this list. Here we have another example of one. This time with Kevin Owens taking on Intercontinental Champion Dean Ambrose. I don't at the think Royal I remember Rumble this match. This match is memorable to me for a few reasons. I think Among I do. them are the excellent finish with KO taking oh, a big yeah. flip bump I through a tower remember. of okay. tables and yep. Big Kev putting his hand directly in Michael Cole's face yep. and breaking his glasses, yep. which I'm I choosing remember. to believe was completely <laughs> intentional and adds a full star of enjoyment onto this match for me. This is just such a fun match. The 2016 Rumble is a damn fine pay-per-view, and this is the best match on the whole show. The Intercontinental Championship has gone through more than its fair share of peaks and valleys during its lifetime, mm -hmm. but every once in a while, the belt would end up on the right people, able mm -hmm. to put on a performance of the night and result in a truly fantastic match before the belt would inevitably end up back on The Miz, and oh god, I've just kicked a Miz fan hornet's nest, and I'm gonna run now, bye. <laughs> Number five, Chris Jericho versus Chris Benoit, 2001. A lot of the time we say the top two or three entries in a list can mostly be interchangeable as they all come pretty close to being the best. But on this list, any of these top five matches can be argued as the best one and you will hear no argument from me. That being said, here is my argument for number five. By 2001, we had seen a drastic shift in the way of the ladder match, thanks to the likes of the mm -hmm. Hardys, Dudleys, and Edge and Christian. Their tag ladder matches were revolutionizing the stipulation, but we hadn't really seen the same for the singles ladder match. HBK and Razor Ramon obviously had their classics, and The Rock and Triple H was something entirely different, but neither was truly emblematic of the direction the latter match was going by the early 2000s. Chris Jericho versus Chris Benoit, on the other hand, absolutely was, and holds up much better in the modern eye than its predecessors. Crisp and sharp and exciting, the two Chris's put on an incredible performance at the 2001 Royal I mean, I Rumble go back over the Intercontinental match. Championship, featuring the first use it. of Jericho's ladder-assisted Walls of Jericho. 
This is a damn fine ladder match. I think I've and seen highlights, of course. And a key addition to one of the best pay-per-views WWE has I don't WWE think I remember watching produced. the whole match. I'm going to have to go Number four, back and check John that out. John Cena versus AJ Styles, 2017. Ooh. The 2017 Royal Rumble's world title matches are both excellent, but this one is a cut above the other. Mm -hmm. John Cena and AJ Styles' 2016 rivalry had seen Styles solidly ahead of Cena in singles wins, resulting yeah. in Styles winning the WWE Championship in the fall. Now with the stakes raised even higher, Cena now looked to tie Ric Flair's 16 world championship record that actually isn't the real record, but that's a fact no. for another time. Yeah, it's this not. match is perhaps <laughs> the peak of John Cena's style. Big move, kick out, lie there. This Big is, move, kick this, out, repeat. This was yes, a fun it match. Yes, a formulaic match, but I'll be damned if that formula didn't produce some incredible matches. This match in particular is so impressive with Cena and Styles never leaving the ring once during their 24 minute classic. They're just taking the 50,000 people in the Alamo Dome on a ride, complete mm -hmm. with intense drama and excellent character moments like Styles reaching for his title after he's lost, only to collapse mm -hmm. back to the map when he gets handed to Cena. You could argue this is the best match of John Cena's career, and what a career he's had. Hey, man, can we... Can, uh, I, I, I really do want AJ to be the champ again. Comment down below let me know if you think AJ Styles should get at least one more WWE Championship run, bro. However they split the titles off Roman... If we're able to get AJ Styles as the WWE champ one more time, I would be okay with it. I would be A-okay with it, bro. The dude is just, <laughs> no pun intended, phenomenal in the ring, man. Number three, Kurt Angle versus Chris Benoit, 2003. Boy, the 2003 Royal Rumble is a funny show. You have WWE's worst match of the year in Scott Steiner versus yeah. Triple H, and then immediately afterwards, you have WWE's best match of the year in Kurt Angle versus Chris Benoit. Angle and Benoit always had absolutely insane mm -hmm. chemistry, the kind of chemistry where they could just get in the ring together and just grapple with nothing being called, nothing being planned ahead of time, and it would still end up being by far the best thing on the show. This match is the best of their epic lives. It shows the testament to how good they were in the ring, you know? that That's, that's really all it is, bro. It shows their t their the uh, their skill level is above many others. It just shows when you can go out there, no calls. You can just kind of get a feel, do some grappling. I don't know what to tell you. That's that. You can't, you know, that's just something you got to have, you know? Rivalry with a crowd hungry to see Benoit win his first WWE championship, only to be disappointed by Angle not willing to give up his title. I say disappointed loosely, of course, as the 15,000 in attendance in Boston gave Benoit a standing ovation after the match, which is always a sign that the crowd has appreciated a special performance. Mm -hmm. Among them may have been Triple H, as Kurt has said that Triple H told him this was the best match he had ever seen when he got back through the curtain. Maybe Damn. he was just amazed by the gap in quality between this match and the one he had just had. Yeah. <laughs> Number two, Triple H versus Cactus Jack, Ooh, 2000. Oh, that was a good one. Ooh. Oh, that was such a good one. I enjoyed this one, boy. I enjoyed a this. A Triple H match that is exceptional, however, this is, is fun. this one. Neither Triple H nor Mick Foley were the top guy to carry WWE in 2000. But with Steve Austin on the uh -huh. shelf for an extended period of time and The Rock otherwise occupied with his own path to WrestleMania, Trips and Cactus Jack were the ones to take the reins of the main event scene during the start of 2000. And I'll be damned this if fun. they didn't put on the best rivalry this was of the year. Good. Triple H had yet to fully prove himself as the top heel of WWE. He had been WWE champion a few times and was well on his way, but needed a true career solidifying rivalry to cement that position. Enter Cactus Jack, mm -hmm. the hardcore legend and the perfect person to make Triple H have to prove his toughness in order to remain a credible. And shout out to 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 Mick Foley. He he's done the job for so many people in the business. It's insane. He did the job for Orton to show his toughness. He did the job for Edge to show his toughness. He did the job for Triple H to show his toughness. He didn't really have to do too much for uh, The Undertaker because he, he just came off as an imposing threat. But guess what? He still did the job to let people know this motherfucker would kill you. Like, I, I we got to give him his flowers. He, he willingly took all this punishment to put people over to prove to everyone else this motherfucker is legitimate. He could kick your ass in any hardcore setting. I... I can appreciate that, man. Gotta appreciate that. Top guy in the eyes of the fans. At the 2000 Royal Rumble, these two had a legendary street fight inside so Madison good. Square Garden, complete with every form of violence you could oh ask for from a God, WWE main so event of the time. Good. A wildly intense crowd, 
brain-melting violence, yeah. complete with a beloved baby face and a truly detestable heel. This yes. is a real lightning in a bottle match. I want you to maybe understand, he took a pedigree, handcuffed to some goddamn thumbtacks. A pedigree while handcuffed to some thumbtacks face but just that all right bro be the most integral moment of triple h's rise to the main event scene and it is by far my favorite triple h match of all time but in terms of matches at the royal rumble Fantastic it match. finishes just shy of number one brock lesnar versus john cena versus seth rollins oh, 2015 uh, as dog yeah. god awful put it in a hole set it on fire and bury it still screaming I bad forgot. as the 2015 royal rumble event is it does have the best example i of forgot that that bro that that match happened that same show <laughs> i forgot damn nah this match is great this match was I, I I expected it to be good, but I didn't know it was going to be this fucking good. That match was mm, chef's kiss fantastic. Great match on a bad that show match ever. So good. Go watch Adam's list of great matches I on terrible about pay-per-views that. to find out the other nine. I, I Brock Lesnar, John Cena, that. and Seth Rollins went to war over the WWE Championship so at the good. Rumble. And I don't know if a perfect match exists, but if it does, this is one of them. This was so this good. This is the good, the bad, and the ugly. With the good John Cena fighting valiantly against the bad Seth Rollins, who was trying to weasel his way into the title, with J and J Security doing his bidding, and the ugly movie monster Brock Lesnar, who was intent to destroy everyone in his path with no discrimination. This was the most perfect example of Brock mm -hmm. Lesnar's suplex city destroyer of all mankind run, and the people were 100% behind him and his sheer awesomeness. Mm -hmm. You had amazing spots like Brock Lesnar suplexing both of J&J &J security at oh once, God, Seth Rollins brutal. hitting the most graceful flying elbow of all time, and Lesnar emerging from the yeah. grave to run wild and retain his title because unstoppable killer Brock Lesnar was at one time the thing we all wanted. Yeah. And then, unfortunately, <laughs> this pay-per-view <laughs> had to keep going. Fucking and that's night, our list. Make sure I forgot that was that... I. It's so crazy because my mind wants to distance the greatness from the sheer utter horribleness. So that's why I forgot it was on the same show. I, for whatever reason, I thought that match was on a completely different show. And maybe subconsciously my brain has separated that great match from this horrible ending of a, a Royal Rumble because it didn't want to make the connection that this was all on one show. Because I truly forgot it was on the road on that same card. Either way, I am okay with that being number one. That was a very, very good match. Honestly, you can honestly switch out the two. You could maybe put Mick Foley, uh, I mean, Mankind. No, Mick Foley versus uh, Triple H Street Fight match. You could put that at number one and this at number two, depending on your preference. But I'm not okay with, I'm, I mean, I am okay with that being number one. Um, but comment down below. Let me know what's your favorite championship match from the Royal Rumble. Let me know down below, man. And do you think there's going to be some good match, good championship matches this year at this year's Royal Rumble? Like I said at the beginning of the video, I think Kevin Owens and Roman Reigns, I think they're going to knock it out the park. I think it, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to bet it's probably going to be the match of the night. I think they're going to knock it out the park once again. And there's more story here even before. It's going to, I can't wait. That's one match I am really looking forward to. Obviously, we know Roman's still not losing, but, but I am still looking forward to seeing how things play out. But comment down below let me know those things man and uh, i appreciate all the love and support and once again i am still your undisputed youtube wrestling champ of the world appreciate y'all keep giving me see you on the next one peace